Welcome back to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie. Today's art journal tutorial is part of a collaboration. Check the description box below for links to the other collaborators. Links to supplies can be found in the description box below. Thank you to those of you who are already subscribed. If you're not a subscriber, hit the button in the lower right hand corner. So here is the mood board that Christy created. First and foremost, we are going to incorporate the colors teal, gray, and yellow. I'm also going to have a floral theme based on the two on the right hand, left hand side. There will be round shapes from the balls in there, and the shape of the umbrella will be mirrored somewhere in my art journal page, as well as the shimmer that you see in the lower right hand corner. Stay tuned. This one was quite a challenge for me. Now I've never used these three colors together. Teal I use quite frequently, but with pinks or with brown. Never with yellow and gray I hardly ever use. So in order to get to know these colors, I decided that I'm going to do some brayering. Now I've sped up this video quite quick, quite a lot, but I'll put a link to a technique video where called Brayered Beginnings where I talk about how to achieve these lovely brayer papers. My goal here wasn't so much to create papers that I use, although that's I did end up doing that, but it was just to see how I liked these colors working together. And I found that the yellow with the teal sometimes turned um, kind of an odd green that I really didn't like. I also found that the gray tended to muddy things up. So I knew that going in, I was going to have to be somewhat careful about these colors and mixing them, especially when they're wet. If they're dry, they look quite nice. And if you do a search of these colors, you'll see lots of baby bedrooms are done in this color and lots of design elements are. So I'm playing with different combinations. I'm playing with the teal and the yellow and the gray and the yellow and the teal and the gray and I quickly learned that I am not going to put all three of them together. I don't mind the gray with the teal and I don't mind the gray with the yellow. Now again a different gray may have different undertones in it and it may give a slightly different look. I just have the one gray so that's kind of what I was using. I'm using various types of paints. I've got my Liquitex Basics, but I also have my Americana Craft Paints. And I have some teals that are more to the blue side and some that are more to the green side. Right now, like I said, I am simply playing. And I'm hoping for some inspiration to hit. And with these brayered papers, as you'll see in my video, you just keep going till you get something that you like. And if you don't like it, you can push it back with black or with white. I even attempted, instead of using gray, using a little bit of silver because I wanted some shimmer and I tried using gold instead of the yellow. Brayering colors and just mixing them and playing with them is a good way to get to know the characteristics of them and maybe get some inspiration for using those colors. And you can see how it gets to a tone that I just, I really didn't like. I struggled with the tones here. So instead of doing this on an art journal page, I chose to do this on an 11 by 14 canvas. Now what you see me doing here, I am Put, adhering it down with white gesso, these cutouts that I cut out using my Silhouette Cameo. I was actually cutting out a stencil and it, something happened and it didn't quite work and I ended up with these little pieces and, and I looked at it and I thought, gee, that would make some lovely texture. And these kind of look like the shapes of the umbrellas in that one picture on the mood board. You could use gel medium or some other glue to adhere this down. I'm 
just trying to get some interesting shapes here and adding you know various levels of texture And don't worry about the colors that you see there. As you can see, it got pushed back. By the end, you don't see any of those colors at all. So after drying it quite well, I decide that I'm going to cut the petals for some flowers. Now, what I'm using here as a template is actually a piece that I've taken out um, was leftover pieces when I was cutting stuff out of my silhouette and I have this nice teal flower and it looks so nice and big don't get attached to that orientation or that composition because that changes quite a bit so I'm just cutting different petals different colors doing yellow doing some of the teal um, not exactly sure where I want to go If you don't have a template for a petal, you can freeform your own. And as I'm looking at this now, it would have been quite lovely with the one big teal flower in the middle. So I'm just playing with the orientation. These are just templates. These are the cutouts that I have. I'm also spending time playing around like this because I have no idea what I want to do for what colors I want to put in the background. I think I might have to do another one with a very light, almost white background with the teal. I really like how that shows up. So I'm going to, I'm thinking I'm going to put some yellow and gray and I get those down and I thought, okay, I'm going to lighten the gray. And as you can see, I end up just putting the gray down. I really didn't like the way the yellow worked with the gray and I just was unsure. So then I get the idea that, okay, I'm going to put the new, the most neutral, the gray kind of as the background but I'll get various um, tones of it getting some darker areas and some lighter areas Gray is not a color that I've typically worked with at all and so it just seemed very cool to me and it, it you know I struggle but that's what a challenge is good for it takes you out of your comfort zone and then maybe you create something amazing with it and I'm just painting the sides <coughs> excuse me so I like where I have some of the darker areas, but since everything is wet, I decide that I'm just going to let this dry a little bit and then I'm going to come back later. Now I want to add even more texture and I have this stencil. I believe this is a dilution stencil. And I'm just adding a little bit more texture here and there. Now some of the Later on, I have a bit of a problem where I put some of this texture because I really didn't have a solid idea of what the composition was going to be. So if you have a, a more defined idea of what, where you're going to put things, you can place these a little more strategically. But I didn't have a plan, so, and it all works in the end. Didn't really like that one, so just scraped it off, washed it off. Um, and, and reapplied.
and just cleaning the stencil. Always, 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 you know, after modeling paste, get that off of there or it will wreck your stencils. So I am applying more paint to this. Actually, I tried something else in there and it didn't work. And so I came back and just put another coat, which I needed to do anyways. Then I decide I'm, I want to add some yellow into the background. So I'm using this tiny dot stencil from the Crafters Workshop and just adding a little bit of yellow in there. Now, because I'm not mixing it wet and wet, it's not making that off color that I didn't really like. This is just little specks of yellow in there. And I really like how that added to it. I'm getting out some black and I am applying it with a sponge or a makeup sponge to my script stamp and I'm just applying the script to the background. Another layer of visual texture. So we've got physical and visual texture. And I'm, I'm not even trying to get a perfect stamp. I just want to get some of that script behind some interest. This is definitely leaning towards kind of old world, you know, a little bit of vintage look to it. Now this time I'm thinking that I'm going to go up and down with the orientation of, of my um, plan. So I put the script going left to right. Wanted to introduce a bit of that teal into the background, but not really overpower it. So I thought, okay, splatters will work. And you really can't pick that up too much, but it's there. Not everything that you add needs to be up front. Some things you want them to take a back. So there I have my petals, and I'm working pretty much happy with this orientation and the word that you see imagine is a word that I cut out with my silhouette and um, I thought hey, that kind of fits. I'm using the black paint to edge all the flower petals. I know that I'm going to add some shading and detailing work later on, but I just thought, you know, this is a step that I typically miss. Then I want to get some things caught into the texture that's there, into the nooks and crannies of both the, the die cuts from my silhouette and the modeling paste and I decide okay I'm going to use my Lindy Starburst sprays and I have I think two from the Industrial Chic collection the teal one I can't think what the name is and the silver and I'm spraying both of those on and doing some drippage And I kind of like the addition of this teal to this. Now these Starburst sprays have mica in them, and so there's some, some shimmer. So I was trying to build that up as well. So when you're applying the sprays and doing drippage, it's taught, you just have to be patient. Add a little more, add a little more. And 
Drippages, again, not something I do a lot of. I don't like the unpredictability of it. Then I decide to put some from the other end. So just like a dance, add a little, spray a little water, let it drip, dry it, start over. Now I realize that if I'm going to glue on stuff, I don't want this Lindy Starburst to reactivate. So I use my brayer and apply a thin coat of gel medium. I've seen this done, but I've never done this. And it worked quite well. I also made sure that the Lindy's was very, very dry. There was probably a couple days in between here. And because I wanted to keep the sparkle, I used a gloss medium. So it's a little bit shiny. Now I really wanted these die cuts to show up more. And so I used two processes. Here you see me using the Stabilo All Pencil and just going around the inside of this the die cut and then activating it with water. And this works. I do switch, and I think that it didn't end up being on camera, to the float technique where I use acrylic paint and a brush and basically shade inside. The advantage of using the acrylic paint is that it is, I think I, I can do it a lot faster. I seem to have more control over it, and it's permanent. And I'll put a link to uh, my technique tag video where I show how to do different ways of adding shading and or highlighting. But you can see this process, whether you're using the float technique or the Stabilo All Pencil or using a charcoal pencil or watercolor pencil or however you're going to do it, doing this step adds a lot to your page or your canvas. There's a before picture of the corner of the canvas, and there is the after picture. And you can see how much interest that technique adds. So once I was happy with how the die cuts were showing up, I got back to organizing, trying to put out these flowers and deciding where they were going. I painted the word imagine with black paint because I really wanted it to show up. And it's seeming that this is going very more to the dark and subdued and more vintage look to it. So I draw a circle to the center and try to place these petals. Now you can be very precise in placing the petals or you can be more haphazard. I try to be precise, but in the end it's still is a little bit more haphazard. So just cutting off the excess and making sure that the flowers are all put down. So I wanted to build some interest in there. So each flower is the same, but they're also different. Some have more petals, some are have a bigger center, some are just bigger. So 
So I do a whole lot of fussy placing here. And I play with it, and I think about it, and I play with it. So I draw in the circle so I know basically where to put the petals, and then I place them. The problem is you get them perfectly placed, and then you have to take them off to glue them down. So sometimes I take a picture of it to try to um, get an idea of what it looks like. I find when you're focusing on one area, sometimes you don't see the whole picture. And so here I decide I'm just going to leave them here and I'm going to start placing them while everything else is still there. And then something happened. I ended up turning it on its side here. And I decided at that time that I'm going to change it. And it is going to be in landscape instead of the other orientation. Here I'm using the float technique that I used for the die cuts that, was, that, that I did off camera. And I'm using a combination of a couple of different blues, the night from the media line, and a Prussian blue from Grumbacher, and some black. Here I'm using some charcoal pencil and just adding a little more highlighting there. I find the charcoal pencil worked really well on top of the gel prints or the brayered papers, but not so well right on the canvas. So after going around with the blue, I am now doing it with the charcoal pencil and going with that color. And I like the combination of the two. So again, please check the description box below. This is part of a brand new art journal collaboration with a few people that were in the Final Friday um, planner collaboration, as well as a whole variety of new people. And it's quite exciting. I've looked into um, the pages and the art of some of the other collaborators, and we all have very distinct styles and techniques that we use in different materials. So I think there's going to be a lot of diversity and really something for everybody. So please check the links out in there. There will also be a hashtag um, that you can search for these videos as well. We plan on putting out a new planner club or planner, an art journal collaboration video on the fifth round the 15th of every month. I don't know the names of all of the people at yet, but so I'm adding more detail. I'm using some gold paint and I put the, sh the on the middle of the flowers as well as a few places on the canvas and that just ties everything together. There was also that shape in the mood board that I used with that stencil. I really like the addition of that stenciling on top of the center of the flowers and the background. It really added a nice finishing color, finishing um, effect.
and just working on the details. This canvas was a real challenge to me. The colors and some of the techniques that I'm using are things that I don't use often. And I'm really glad that I took the challenge. I really am happy with the end result. This was a drop in frame and I just wanted to see how it looked. Here's a peek of the mood board again that Christy created and some close ups of the finished canvas. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there's some techniques and things that you can try. How about trying this color combination? What do you come up with? Thanks so much for joining me in this video. I hope you do check out the links of the other collaborators and we'll see you in November for the next art journal collaboration.